So how many people should you survey? That's a big question to ask and here's how you can do it. Uh, so we've already done some work on confidence intervals. You'll know the confidence interval formula looks a little bit something like that. Now I want to hone in on just part of the, the formula. It's this bit here. Um, now that is called our margin of error. The formula that I'm going to run with here, uh, other people will say ZP uh, 1 minus P, but Q is the same deal. Um, so what our margin of error does is say we are going to be this amount from the um, actual proportion. So if our sample proportion was 52% and our margin er of error is 3%, then we're going to be between uh, 52 minus 3%, which is 49, and 52 plus 3, which is 55. So our margin of error tells us what percentage above or below we are the actual population. Explanation there, if your margin of error is 3%, if that value is 3%, and your sample proportion is 52%, then you believe that the population proportion is between 49 and 55% within whatever confidence interval you've got, 95%, 99%, 90%. Now, um, if you want a small margin of error, you have to survey a lot of people. If you don't care that your margin of error is large, then you don't have to survey as many people. Now, making good choices about how many people to survey is important because surveying people costs money. So an example question might be something like this. Determine the sample size required to achieve a margin of error of 2% in an approximate 95% confidence interval for the proportion of primary school children in Australia who use social media if the sample proportion P is found to be 0.7. Now, I think there's a big problem with this question, so you might want to pause it for a second and think about what problem I have with it. Now, in the real world, you're trying to determine your sample size before you do your survey so you know how much money to spend. Should I, should I survey 100 people? Should I survey 1,000 people? Now, if you're trying to determine your sample size before you've done your survey, how on earth do you know that the sample proportion is found to be 0.7? That would suggest I've already surveyed people. I've already determined my sample size. So, in the real world, you make a guess at what your sample proportion is based on other surveys and other data. So they've guessed that their sample proportion will be approximately 0.7 before they've done their sample. So they can now use that approximate sample proportion uh, to determine what sample size they should use. Um, statistics, survey, data collection, it's art and science. So you need to make those approximations as you go so that you can create these um, confidence intervals as you go. All right, so let's determine a sample size. We're going to use this formula uh, to do it. Now, we need a margin of error of 2%, and we know that margin of error equals this stuff here. Now, if the margin of error equals Z square E P, P hat Q hat on N, now we know what our Z score is going to be in this instance, right, because... We want a 95% confidence interval, and we've memorized the number 1.96 for 95% confidence intervals. Uh, now we square root, now P, sample proportion P, 0.7. Sample proportion, uh, so Q hat is 1 minus that, which is 0.3, over the sample size, which I don't know. And from here, it's just algebraic manipulation. Uh, I've just missed my margin of error. My margin of error is 2%. Okay, so from here, it's just algebraic manipulation. Uh, I divide both sides by uh, 1.96. So 0 0.02 divided by 1.96 will be the square root of 0.7 times 0.3 over n. I can square both sides now. So it's going to be 0 0.02 over 1.96 squared will be equal to 0.7 times 0.3 over n. And then from here, I'm going to take that n and multiply both sides by n, which will bring it into the top over here. I'm going to take 0.02 over 1.96 squared and divide both sides by it. Uh, this has the effect of cross multiplying. So the n will move up to there and all of that will move down to 
there, which will give me 0.7 times 0.3 over 0.02 over 1.96 squared uh, equals n. All right, now you could have um, simplified this at any stage. You could have simplified this at any stage. I've just kept everything as it is, and now I'm going to put it all into my calculator. Okay, and I have an answer of 2016.84. Uh, so that's 2016.84. Uh, I'll round that up to 2017. Uh, so we need a sample size of 2017 people so that we can have an approximate uh, margin of or an, a margin of error of 2%. In the real world, you've got to work with some assumptions. They would have had to assume that their sample proportion would be approximately 0 0.7 before they started. But even 0.6 or 0 0.8, um, they could have just surveyed a few more people to account for not quite knowing what that sample proportion was. But there is a good start. And the important thing to understand is how to do those questions and understand that if you're finding sample sizes required for a certain margin of error, it's simply algebraic manipulation.